This is your weekly report on corruption in the Philippine government. The chief of police of Pasay City and 26 other police officers have been relieved from their posts amid an investigation into a Philippine offshore gaming operator in the city which was raided by authorities for human trafficking and other illegal activities last month. Pasay City Police Director Colonel Froil Anuai, Substation Commander Captain Chris Antonio Catalunia and 25 police non-commissioned officers are facing an investigation for possible neglect of duty. Philippine National Police spokesperson Colonel Jean Fajardo said in a press briefing in Camp Crane, Quezon City on Friday. Fajardo said Colonel Mario Mayanes would replace Uai as Pase Chief of Police while replacing Catalonia would be Major Crystal Carl of Elon Weaver. If this pogo has existed for a long time and there are illegal activities, remember, the PNP has a one-strike policy. If something has been happening there within your knowledge and you did nothing, then you will be charged with neglect of duty, Fajardo said. National Capital Region Police Office Brigadier General Jose Malencio Nartetez Jr. has ordered the relief of a police officer in Las Pinas City from his post for alleged maltreatment of police trainees. NCRPO spokesperson Lt. Col. Eunice Salas, in a message to the Philippine News Agency on Friday, said Major Naumcia was relieved from his post as Chief of the Administrative Resources Management Section of the Las Pinas City Police Station, for allegedly using excessive force and disciplining erring police trainees. He was already relieved and was reassigned to the Administrative Holding Section of the Las Pinas City Police Station. He is undergoing investigation and will be charged with administrative and criminal cases, Salah said, adding that the suspect might face an administrative complaint for grave misconduct and a criminal case for physical injury. In a police report, the complainant said C ordered them to report to the station's headquarters at exactly 8 a.m. on the 29th of October for administrative announcements and accounting amid the full alert status for the Barangay and Sangguniang Kabatin elections. However, the police trainees failed to come on time and were then marked late. Sia then instructed them to proceed to the station's community affairs office where they were sanctioned for their misdemeanor. Sia allegedly hit the trainees with a wooden stick and different parts of their bodies, including their heads. Four individuals, including a newly elected village councilman, are facing criminal charges for allegedly harassing voters during the 30th of October Barangay and Sangguniang Kabatin elections. A provincial police official said on Friday, Major Nolan Tagsip, Cebu Provincial Police spokesperson, said three of the four armed men who reportedly harassed voters in Barangay Tapan, Dumanjug Town on Monday, have been identified. Out of the four suspects, we were able to identify three. The complainants are hiring private lawyers to take care of their case against them, Tagsip said. They were seen on a video that circulated on Facebook during election day carrying short firearms. One of the suspects reportedly won the recently concluded elections, he said. The suspects are facing physical injury, grave threats, and illegal possession of loose firearms in relation to the commission on election imposed gun ban. The councilman will also face administrative charges, Tagsip added. Lieutenant Colonel Gerard A. Speller, Police Regional Office 7 spokesperson said Brig General Anthony Aberin directed the Duman Jug police to investigate the incident and file appropriate charges against the councilman and three others. A newly elected 58-year-old village councillor was shot dead inside a barangay hall in Pase City on Monday, according to police. In a report Tuesday, the Pase City police station identified the victim as Lena. He was attacked by two suspects on board a motorcycle in front of Barangay 37 Hall on San Juan Street at 5.35 p.m. Police said the CCTV footage showed that the pillion rider alighted the motorcycle and shot the victim twice inside the Barangay Hall. The newly elected leader, who previously served as village treasurer, was rushed to the Adventist Medical Center but was pronounced dead at about 6.16 p.m., Pase CPS said. Meanwhile. The city's station drug enforcement unit operatives patrolling the area apprehended the accomplice of the gunman after their motorcycle bumped a commuter waiting for a ride. The accomplice was identified as 27-year-old Vladimir, while the other suspect who shot the victim eluded arrest. 
has a CPS said its personnel already launched a manhunt operation to locate the whereabouts of the gunman. A municipal councillor was wounded but survived an attempt to kill him in front of his residence in Vilan Weather, Miss Amis Oriental, Major Joanne Navarro, spokesperson of Police Regional Office 10, Northern Mindanao, said Councillor Hermel Valida, 45, is in stable condition after sustaining injuries when shot by a still unidentified gunman. We urge our elected officials who are receiving threats on their lives to coordinate with our police force. We are always willing to cooperate, Navarro said in a radio interview on Monday. In a report, Major Renz Marian Serrano, chief of the Vilan Weather Police Station, said Valada sustained wounds on his right cheekbones after the attack in Barangay Lua de Melda Sunday evening. Initial investigation showed that Valada was on boat awaiting mini truck and was about to head outside the gate of his house when the gunman opened fire. Due to panic and fear, both victim and witness did not notice any getaway vehicle of the suspect, Serrano said. Recovered from the crime scene was a spent 45 caliber cartridge. The Vilan Weather Police were still determining the identity of the attacker. Two former officials of the now-defunct National Agribusiness Corporation have been convicted by the Sandagan Bayan in three criminal cases involving the ghost procurement of 4.8 million worth of seedlings for the 1st District of Laneo del Norte in 2009, convicted of graft, malversation of public funds, and malversation through falsification of commercial documents were former NABCOR Administrative and Finance Director Rodora B. Mendoza and General Services Chief Romulo M. Relivo. On graft charge, Mendoza and Relivo were sentenced to a prison term ranging from 6 to 10 years with perpetual disqualification to hold public office. The two former officials were sentenced to a jail term of 10 to 16 years for malversation of public funds and from 2 to 8 years imprisonment for malversation through falsification of commercial documents. Certified public accountant Elizabeth D. Balbuckle has been acquitted in the three cases for failure of the prosecution to prove her guilty beyond reasonable doubt. However, the anti-graft court ordered all of them Mendoza, Relivo and Balbuckle to pay back the Bureau of Treasury more than 4.8 million pesos representing the funds which were wrongfully and illegally dispersed. Also charged in the three cases were former NABCOR President Alana Javalana and accountant Mar Julia Villaralvo Johnson, and Kasanga Somagandang Bucas Foundation Finance Officer Mary Luel Antonio. Since they remained at large, the cases against them have been archived. They were accused of giving unwarranted benefits to KMBFI and dispersed 4,850,000 pesos of the Priority Development Assistance Fund of then-Congressman Vicente F. Belmont Jr. for non-existent livelihood programs. In acquitting Balbacor, the anti-graft court said that her signatures and the liquidation reports and auditors' reports were not affixed by her, and there was insufficient proof that she participated in the preparation of the documents. In convicting Mendoza and Relivo, the court said that their actions caused the disappearance of the funds. It said, if a demand was made upon an accountable public official to produce the funds in his custody and he or she failed to do so, the presumption thereby arising would render unnecessary further proof of conversion. The disappearance of public funds in the hands of the accountable officer is prima facie evidence of its conversion. Unidentified gunman shot dead on Tuesday morning a newly proclaimed village councilman of Antipas Town. Cotabato Province. He was the second recently elected village official in the province to be killed in a gun attack in seven days. The Antipas Municipal Police Station. In a report to Brigadier General Jim Lee Macarig, Police Regional Office 12 Director, identified the victim as Edmar Pereiro, 34, of Barangay Dolores. In a statement, the Antipas Police condemned the shooting of Pereiro and called on anyone who has information to help them locate the perpetrators. Pereiro was driving a tricycle heading toward Barangay Mark Saisai from Dolores, traversing an isolated concrete road near a banana plantation when attacked by motorcycle riding gunmen. Initial police investigation showed that Pereiro ran away after getting hit in the body but fell on a drainage canal as the suspects fired more shots. Police found empty shells for a 45 pistol and 9mm pistol at the crime scene. The police said the motive of the attack was still unknown as of posting time. Pereiro ranked second in the race for village council seats of Barangay Dolores during the 30th of October polls.
A newly elected village chief was shot dead by unknown assailants in Purukbanga, Barangay Datu Abdul Dadia, Panabu City, Davo del Norte on Tuesday afternoon. Authorities identified the victim as engineer Paul Albert Sakwian, the new Barangay chairman of Barangay Datu Abdul Dadia, Panabo City. Sakwian was brought to a hospital after sustaining multiple gunshot wounds but was declared dead an hour after the incident. Based on the initial investigation of Panabo City Police, the victim was driving his car and was heading to his residence. He was fired upon by two unidentified men who were on a motorcycle. The assailants fled towards the city proper after the incident. Motive is yet to be determined. Hot pursuit operation is being conducted for the possible arrest of the suspect, Panabo City Police said in their initial report. Panabo City Mayor Jose Relampagus condemned the killing of Sakwian who was a former Barangay Cagord. A newly elected Barangay chairperson in Lapidian village in this city was gunned down about 6.30 Wednesday, outside his house, Rafoldo Dakel, who had yet to take his oath of office as the new chairperson of Barangay Lapidian, was about to park the Barangay-owned tricycle earlier used to transport a patient, when an unidentified gunman approached and shot him, Lieutenant Colonel Rex Perocho. Chief of the Zambuanga del Sur Criminal Investigation and Detection Group, said. Lori Carrillo, Dackel's relative, said they were inside the house preparing dinner a few meters away, when they heard a gunshot and the victim's cry for help. They immediately rushed the bloody Dackel to the infirmary hospital in Barangay Dan Lugan and later to the Asa hospital, but the attending physician declared him dead. Dackel served as a barangay councillor when he decided to run and won the barangay chair seat in the recent barangay and sanguniang cabotin elections. His son Freynold, a newly elected SK Kagorad, said his father had received death threats before the elections, but they dismissed the information. Dackel's wife, Ruth, at the time of the shooting, was already washing her husband's supposed attire for his oath-taking Thursday afternoon at the Pagadian City Commercial Center. City Mayor Samuel Co condemned the killing. Co, who openly supported Dackel, said he was aware of the victim's struggle as a challenger to the incumbent during the recently concluded Barangay and SK elections. He said the motive for the attack had yet to be determined but with Dackel being known as a good man, we only see politics as the possible motive, said company among the city's 54 barangays. Only Lapidian was considered an area of concern by the Commission on Elections in the last elections with reports of harassments from the two opposing parties, prompting the city to request a security detachment in the area with the composite team from both military and the local police. But a few days after the successful polls, the composite security teams were pulled out from the area to another assignment, 53rd Infantry Battalion Commander Lieutenant Colonel Terence Sillinan said. Seven of the nine inmates who escaped from custodial facility of Manila Police District Station 1 in Tondo, Manila on Wednesday morning have been recaptured, while several jail guards have been relieved from their posts, authorities said. Recaptured after follow-up operations were Arnold Alino, MJ Tozan, Jericho Andal Antipusto, Albert Callias, Giancarlo Reyla, Adriano Zilmer and John Joseph Laguna, according to MPD2 remaining inmates. Master Cedric Zodiacal and Jefferson Tumbaga are still being tracked down as of posting time, the police said. According to the National Capital Region Police Office, initial investigation showed that detainees escaped after dismantling the iron grill on the side of the detention facility. The MPD did not reveal the identities of the police personnel but said a number of custodial officers have already been administratively relieved from their posts to give way to the ongoing investigation. In a separate interview with reporters, Manila Police District Acting Director Arnold Thomas Ibe said they are looking at the extent of negligence of some four police officers. Finance Secretary Benjamin E. Diakno has ramped up the anti-graft efforts of the Department of Finance through the strength and operations of the Revenue Integrity Protection Service. Prudent fiscal management must be underpinned by transparency and accountability. As custodians of public resources, we cannot afford to leave any room for graft and corruption, Diakno said. The RIPS, established under Executive Order No. 259 in 2003, serves as the DOF's anti-corruption division, responsible for conducting lifestyle checks, probing graft allegations, and initiating legal actions, both criminal and administrative. 
against officials and staff of the DOF, its bureaus, and attached agencies. From the 20th of July 22 to the 20th of September 23, RIPS has launched a total of 58 investigations targeting officials and employees suspected of misconduct within its jurisdiction. These involve 23 cases linked to the Bureau of Customs, 23 cases pertaining to the Bureau of Internal Revenue, 6 cases associated with the Bureau of Local Government Finance, 1 case involving the Insurance Commission, and 1 case concerning the Department of Finance. There are also 3 cases related to the Securities and Exchange Commission, and 1 case involving the Philippine Deposit Insurance Corporation. It has filed 5 cases with the Civil Service Commission against employees of the BIR, BOC, and BLFG. Filed 6 cases with the Office of the Ombudsman against employees of the BIR, and has received 8 favorable resolutions during the term of President Marcos. The Commission on Audit has recommended that sanctions, like suspension of salaries, be imposed on erring officials of the Department of Information and Technology for delay or non-submission of financial statements for three consecutive years. The DICT did not submit the year-end financial statement for three consecutive years as well as the quarterly financial statement along with the supporting account schedules and sick leaves, which were due on the 14th of February of each year and 10 days after the end of the quarter, respectively, the COA said in its management letter. In failing to make timely submissions, the COA said that the DICT's assertions on the completeness and accuracy of its accounts and transactions as of the 31st of December, 2022 could not be established. Other financial reports supporting the financial statement such as the aging of accounts, schedule of income taxes paid, schedule of fund transfer, statement of management responsibility. Statement of comparison of budget and actual accounts were not prepared and submitted to the COA, it said. It shall be noted that several follow-ups were made to the accounting division yet compliance therewith remained unheeded, COA lamented. Further, supporting schedules and subsidiary ledgers of the account balances supporting the trial balances were not completely submitted, it said. It noted that the DICT's accounting department only updates the SLs after the completion of the TB thus. The TB submitted without the schedules and SL supporting the amounts reported therein does not support the DICT's assertions on the correctness and completeness of the account balances reported therein, it said. It then recommended that the DICT management take appropriate action on the suspension of salary against those who were responsible for the delayed or non-submission of financial statements for the past three years. Based on the provisions of Volume 1 of the Government Accounting Manual for National Government Agencies and Presidential Decree No. 1445, the Sandagan Bayan on Thursday upheld its earlier ruling convicting former Sarangani Governor Miguel Escobar and another former provincial official on graft and malversation of public funds charges, amounting to 450,000 pesos, in a resolution dated November 9, the anti- Graft Court denied a motion for reconsideration filed by Escobar in connection with his conviction last August on the same charges arising from transactions in 2002 involving financial aid given to a Fisher Faux group. The tribunal also found guilty in its original ruling was then management analyst Alexis Jude de la Cruz. The accused was sentenced to up to 10 years imprisonment and directed to reimburse the provincial government 450,000 pesos and to pay a fine of 5,000 pesos each. All told, accused Escobar and de la Cruz failed to show any compelling reason why this court should re-evaluate their arguments and their motions and overturn its earlier pronouncement, Associate Justice Kevin Nas Vivero said in the ruling. Adent, accused Escobar's defense of good faith. We reiterate our ruling in the assailed decision that he cannot simply invoke good faith to escape liability, the tribunal said. Escobar claimed that he relied in good faith that the provincial administrator reviewed the letter request and supporting documents for the financial assistance to Malapitan Fisherman's group. However, the anti-graft court said there were deficiencies and irregularities in the documents that should have alerted the then governor. De La Cruz's claim that he did not receive any money or remuneration from the transaction and that shows his lack of motive to commit the crime is misplaced. Receipt of a sum of money or motive is not an essential element of the crime. Thus, dispensable for conviction, the tribunal ruled. The court said the accused made it appear that 450,000 pesos in financial assistance was requested and given to the Malapitan Fisherman's Group, 
Even as the prosecution showed that the group never received the financial assistance even after the check had been cashed. That's all for this week. I'll see you next week with more stories of corruption and foolishness within the Philippine government.